What's going on guys, it's Danny from Slow Restoration and hopefully you caught the video, the last video about the Turbo GMC. I'm very, very proud of this truck. Um, it, we finally hit 11s. We actually had two passes um, at the track that were 11 second passes. The first pass was absolutely horrible. Um, and then the second pass we did 11.9 I believe. And then the second pass was our best pass, you know, that day and to date 1188 so very very proud of this truck it's got more in it for sure um, with that being said if you did watch that video you know the engine light popped on when we were at the track so we have our code breeder inside the truck here let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it is see what we broke let's reach out there and turn the key on our scanner up. Um, of course, <clears throat> the, the gas gauge, as you can see, is not reading also. So we know that's an issue. Um, that happened when we were at the track. Uh, it did happen once before, like I was saying in that video, and we were able to fix it. There's something in the center, sender that actually comes loose under hard launches so um, we may have to drop the fuel tank to fix that but uh, let's go through diagnostics uh, we do let's see what our engine light is codes found one so yep well anything stored in the scanner so now we're gonna read codes stored codes and there it is <clears throat> Evaporative emission system pressure sensor switch low. So I'm um, I'm gonna say that's the same issue as our fuel gauge. So it's no no real issue with the truck as far as motor uh, mechanically or anything like that. It's more of an emissions thing, and that there is a uh, pressure switch in the top of the fuel sender, which I'm guessing that's what that is. So it's probably all the same issue. Um, the fuel slosh whatever happened did knock our gas gauge out also knocked this switch out so i'm guessing it was probably a wire that came loose or a, a plug rather that came loose so before we drop the tank we'll put throw it up on the lift and kind of reach actually i think you can reach through and get to the top of the sender right through here we're not really going to mess with it right now but uh, i might be able to wiggle that around and see if we can make that work without dropping the tank that would be really nice if not no big deal we've had it down before we'll drop the tank so with that i'm gonna go ahead and actually go through and erase we erase the codes and see if it comes right back on. All right, erase is done. So when we get some time, we'll fire this thing up and run it, drive it a few miles and see if that pops right back on. Um, but we do need, it's a pain not having a fuel gauge. So we definitely need to fix that. So the other thing we're gonna talk about here is We'll go ahead and shut this up. If you did see at the end of, most people don't watch all the way through a video, but if you did stick all the way through to the end of the video, the drag strip video, I did announce we're doing a new build. So um, it's not gonna be this truck. It is another Turbo GMC build. It's a very similar truck to this. Um, we have a bunch of parts on order, um, a couple companies on board, Texas Speed, is supplying parts um, not free of course we're paying but Texas speed we're getting a bunch of parts from them um, yank converters the same torque converter I'm running in this um, so Texas speed and yank are on board we're also talking about talking to a turbo company a front mount turbo company and try and get them on board on this build also um, hopefully that works out also um, but we do have parts coming some of them may be here the end of this week if not hopefully uh, the following week and we can kind of get rolling on that project um, it's going to be this is a 2004 it's going to be a 2003 it's a 2003 it's actually the same color it's four-door short bed not lifted 
Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same truck. So instead of being extended cab like mine is, it is four door, um, same color, not lifted, and um, same same motor, same transmission. So six liter uh, LQ four motor and the four L eighty E trans, <clears throat> which is a, a with just a little bit of help, are pretty bulletproof so we will this truck also has an hd2 hd2 shift kit from uh transigo uh that transmission will be getting it we have to pull the trans to put the torque converter in so we'll install the shift kit at that time we have another texas speed cam coming it's actually the exact same cam that we have in this so it's a 224 228 uh, degrees duration and a 600 lift so uh, they'll have the same cam we are doing heads um, the CNC ported heads from Texas Speed we are doing on this other build uh, I'm so far these heads have never been off this truck um, so people have asked about like ring gap and stuff like that it's totally untouched the heads have never been off the bottom end has never been apart uh, oil pans actually never been off this truck um, so, uh, the other build will be front mount turbo, um, and it will have a set of PRC, uh, CNC ported heads on it. So very close. Um, I think maybe the extra weight of the four door, um, uh, might offset that little bit of extra power. Uh, I don't know. We'll try and get both trucks on the dyno. We're going to compare these two back and forth a lot so we'll do um, dynos um, you know dyno runs see what the rear wheel horsepower is on both trucks we'll do driving tests you know street performance um, we'll definitely get them down to the drag strip at the same time and see see how that works out uh, i honestly don't think it's going to be all that much different uh difference i i know a lot of people talk about the rear mount let me walk over here and look at the turbo a lot of people talk about this rear mount system and don't don't really like it or have all these preconceived ideas that you're gonna have massive um turbo lag and stuff like that and everyone's super concerned with the placement of that filter uh, i've never really had any issues so all that will be changed on the front mount, of course. The you know, filter will be up under the hood. Um, there will be a lot less piping. <clears throat> this truck, honestly, does not have very much turbo lag at all. Um, people just have misconceived ideas about this system. I don't know. It works really good for this truck, but we have the opportunity to do a side-by-side -side comparison with two extremely simple trucks. And if, if it comes right down to it, I may end up pulling the heads on this, having them ported too, just so we can eliminate that variable. But for right now, I'm going to leave this one together. We'll get the other truck um, put together, turboed, cam, uh, converter, shift kit, and get it tuned and just see how close we are. We do really need to clean this truck up again. As you can see, there's rubber all over. Uh, caked in the wheel wells and even on the front here um yeah it def desperately needs washed and cleaned up again so the damage report on this truck is very very minimal um it's pretty much down to uh something came loose in the gas tank or in the sending unit anyway so um, no big deal we'll get that taken care of and like i said we'll We'll get on that other truck. I'm anxious to get it in here. We have some other projects going on and people keep asking about Project LS Extreme. It's still here. Um, it hasn't gone anywhere. As you can see, it's collecting dust. I really need to get back on there. We just got so much other stuff going on um, between our builds, other people's builds, helping people out. It's the way life goes, but we... I definitely want to get back on this and get this truck finished. Um, we want, we've come a long ways. If you haven't seen any of these, this is a 5.3. Um, there's a bunch of videos. There's actually a whole playlist put together of what I've did here so far. But this is a 5.3 um, low, lower miles motor. 
It does have a Texas Speed cam in it. We took the frame all the way down to a bare frame, had it blasted. I painted it. We, it's got stainless works headers on it. It's got uh, current performance engine mounts on it. Uh, we have their custom wiring harness that plugs right into the S10 uh, cab. Um, does have an MV3500 tr five speed transmission uh, with custom three inch exhaust. And I don't know if you can see back there, but it's actually center mount dump. Um, we had the bed on and every, everything like that. And the, the roll pan brought the exhaust out nice. So we need to get this cleaned back up. Uh, we're actually down to final body work and paint. I really need to get the cab painted. Uh, it's in final prime. I just really got to find the time to get it painted. So, um, and then reassembly. Reassembly will go a lot faster. If you know anything about body work, that takes time. It's all about prep work. Um, and we've gotten a lot of the prep work done, but it's not 100%, it still needs painted. So this is a neat project that we still wanna get finished up. Um, and of course the Model A, we haven't really did a whole lot with that. Uh, we drug it out of the barn, got it running again, and it's it's good. It runs and drives. I can back it out and do whatever I need, but you know it is kind of here taking up some space. Of course, uh, the Camaro um, is kind of a, a long process here. Here's the floor for it. It's still not in, but we're getting really, really close to actually getting that in. So, all right, that's enough of me talking. Hopefully, you're excited about this next Turbo GMC build. Um, for everyone that hates the rear mount, they should love this this next build. And uh, like I said, it should settle a lot of the controversy between front mount, rear mount. That's my goal in doing this other build um, is to be able to directly compare the two and you know, there are some issues with rear mount. I think there are some issues with front mount. So either way, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.